I'm Joe Matthew, Bloomberg News, joining you from Capitol Hill as we spend some time today with Senator Rick Scott, Republican from Florida. Senator, it's great to see you. Thanks for being with us on Bloomberg. It's great to be with you. As I'm sure you've heard, there are some big meetings happening on the other end of Pennsylvania Avenue. President Biden is sitting down with members of the House in a couple of different sessions to talk about the infrastructure and reconciliation plans that I know you oppose. Last time we spoke, you, you talked about the impact it would have on inflation and rising prices. This White House says it's the opposite, that passing these plans will lower costs on everything from drugs to child care, that increasing the supply side is the answer. Are they wrong? First off, the Biden administration doesn't understand basic economics. If you look at it, excess government spending always causes inflation. Inflation hurts the poorest families in this country. I grew up in a poor family. I watched my mom. We lived in public housing. And I watched my mom struggle to put food on the table. That's what's going on all across this country right now. Food prices are up. Gas prices are up. People are having to choose. Do I fill up my car to get to work or do I feed my kids? That's what's going on in this country. I mean, the Biden administration said it was a high class problem. We're not talking about just Gucci bags going up. We're talking about milk going up, gas going up, homes going up, rent going up, reused cars going up. Everything's going up. The poorest families are getting creamed by the Biden agenda. This, this, you know, and then now he's got this vaccine mandate. My dad was a truck driver. My adopted dad was a truck driver. So they're going to tell an individual like him, you either go to work or you take a shot. Now, what if he's not comfortable taking the shot? So he just loses his job? I mean, who's do, who he thinks about these policies? And by the way, if guys like my dad, the truck drivers, quit their job or lose their job, what's going to happen to the supply chain? And it's going to cause more inflation. I want to ask you about supply chains because the, the clogged supply chains are getting a lot of the blame for high prices as well. Do you support the president's effort to, to bring ports to a 24-7 schedule? Will that help to relieve some of the pressure? I support whatever we can do to get these supplies back to families, and we got to get these prices down. When I was governor of Florida, we have 15 uh, seaports in my state. I invested $101.4 billion. One, they're good paying jobs. Two, it will reduce the cost to get goods into the great state of Florida. So I, be I believe that we've got to invest in our ports and we've got to do this. But absolutely, we've got to do everything we can. It has to be all hands on deck. But what we need to do is we need to get guys like the Secretary of Transportation, Buttigieg, and we need the Secretary of Commerce to come to the Commerce Committee and say, what are you doing? I mean, they're acting like they're commentators. Oh, well, this is going to be a problem. Well, there's that, that's a commentator. No, you're supposed to be an action person. They're not getting anything done, and it's going to cause more and more and more inflation. It hurts our poorest families. Well, tell me more about what you would do, because we know that private enterprise runs most of this chain, right? From the ships to the ports to the warehouses, trucking and rail. How does Senator Rick Scott solve the problem? I'm a business guy, right? So what you do is you call people. You get people to sit down and say, what are the issues? And let's just one by one by one solve the issue. I mean, as an example, are we making it too difficult uh, to get truck drivers? Are we making it too difficult? Are we limiting their hours the wrong way? Talk to the people in the business. I had four hurricanes while I was governor, four massive hurricanes. And so what I did is I sat down with each industry group and said, how do I help you get the utilities back on? How do I make sure we don't run out of gas? What do you need uh, me to do? How do I make sure your phones are gonna work? And then we just saw one thing after the other. But what the Biden administration does, they'll sit down with some bankers from New York, but they won't sit down with, with people that solve the problem. Sit down with truckers, ask them, what are we doing to you? Because they're, they're not doing anything to help truckers like my dad. They did have a pretty big meeting at the White House with FedEx, UPS, some of the big retailers. Is that a better approach? I think they ought to meet with everybody they can. But what did they do? Something come out of it? I mean, I'm a business guy. What you do, if you want to solve problems, you do something. Mm -hmm. You try. You say, okay, I'm going to try that. So what, but this, what this White House is, they'll have a nice meeting, but nothing will happen. I mean, you don't hear anything out of the Secretary of Transportation. What is he doing? Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what, is, what actions is he taking? What regulation is he waiving? What, what, How is he making it easier to get goods to market? You helped to introduce the Pay Down the Debt Act, and I was reading your op-ed on that recently. Why not use this debate over the debt ceiling that's currently being had? And we're about to have this debate all over again, even though I know Mitch McConnell says Republicans will not play a role in suspending or raising the debt ceiling. Wouldn't you seize this moment as leverage to maybe create a plan to pay down the debt like yours? Absolutely. We have got to figure out how to get our fiscal house in order. 
you don't get to go and just borrow unbelievable amounts of money. You have to live within your means. Families have to do it across this country. We all have to do it, except for government. So we've got to say, if you care about Medicare, if you care about Social Security, then we've got to live within our means. We've got to figure out how do we live within our means so we can continue to fund those programs. Mm -hmm. If you care about a poor family and to stop the inflation, like watching, I remember my mom worried about when she would send me to the grocery store, she said, she said, Ricky, you only have this amount of food and money. you got to look at the, all the prices. we got to help people like that. And you don't do it by reckless spending. You don't do it by running up big deficits. Their plan right now, the Democrats' plan, will take our federal debt to $45 trillion. Who's going to, how many people are going to vote to raise their taxes to pay for $45 yeah. trillion dollars worth of debt? Well, They're I ask not. you that because political parties tend to, to find religion on debt when they're in the minority, right? How do you keep that, that spirit, that message you just sent alive if Republicans retake control of the Senate? Well, first off, we're going to take control of the Senate. The, the American public is fed up with the Biden administration. When I was governor of Florida, right, I actually paid off a third of the state debt. I walked in with a $4 billion budget deficit. Right? My, the economy in Florida at the time in 2010, when I got elected, was in shambles. The private sector added 1.7 million jobs. We cut 100 taxes and fees. We cut about 20% of the regulations in the state. We streamlined the permitting. Guess what? Jobs came back, revenues grew. We paid down our debt. That's what we've got to do. That's what we have to do up here. I'm going to keep fighting to get people to say, one, we've got to grow this economy and we've got to live within our means and we've got to take care of our safety net programs so we don't have problems down the road. You're chair of the NRSC, so I'll ask you about taking over uh, the Senate. As you stare down this, uh, this path to the midterms, you're raising an enormous amount of money. I believe it was $25 million in the last quarter. You have more at this stage of the year than you did in 2019. You're leveraging the internet, it appears, in a very effective way. 56,000 new donors to the Republican Party. How are you using the internet to redefine fundraising? Well, first off, just this year, we added over 100,000 new um, uh, online or digital donors. I mean, I mean, we're doing unbelievable because people are engaged. So we're talking to them. We're letting them know what's happening up here. Uh, so we've just in the month of September, we raised $5 million just on digital. Uh, average donation, 30 bucks. I think it was over 160,000 donations. 160,000 donations in one month. Mm. So we're just engaging with, with donors. We're trying to find new donors every month. We're growing our, our, uh, our base. Uh, quite a bit, and I'm traveling the country, talking to people, giving speeches around the country. People are excited about our agenda. They know that Biden's agenda is horrible. His numbers are crumbling. They know we have exciting candidates. Uh, they know that the Democrats are going to have very Bernie Sanders-type primaries, where the, the Bernie Sanders section of the party is going to um, push everybody way far to the to the left, is going to, which is going to help us, because the country, they want, what do they want? They want jobs. They want a good education system for their kids. They want school choice. They want to fund the police. They don't want an open border. They don't want an, um, an Afghanistan withdrawal that is like Biden did it. So it's going to be an exciting 22. We're going to take back a big majority, I believe. I know you're not a fan of the infrastructure reconciliation plans, but if Democrats find a way to pass them, doesn't that help your chances in the midterms based on your view? Absolutely. We just finished a, um, we just finished a suburban poll of, of suburban voters. And by the way, the suburban voters are all in uh, they're to help Republicans take back the majority because they're tired of the Biden agenda. But we just, one of the things we asked about was this, this so-called, um, you know, I don't know what the stimulus bill is. It's, it's like, it's, they say it's 3.5, it's really 5.5. Here's what people know. It's going to cost a lot of money. Their taxes are going up. As a result, it's very unpopular. People like things if they're free, but when they ex understand that their taxes are going to go up, they're way, 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 way. I don't want that. Even families who are making less than four hundred thousand dollars a year, they they yeah. they're being told by Democrats that they're going to get these benefits without having to see their taxes go up. That's a lie. First off, the Democrats already raised the taxes on people not making much money on the Uber drivers, DoorDash, people like that. They already did that this year in their $1.9 trillion so-called COVID bill that had nothing to do with COVID. So they've already raised taxes on the people they said they wouldn't raise taxes. If you look at all the analysis, they're going to raise taxes on all Americans. I mean, this, your taxes, if they get this passed, your taxes are going up. How in the living, how would anybody believe their taxes are not going up when you look at the deficits we're running? 
I mean, I mean, you know your taxes, they're going to try to raise your taxes. They want to spend your money, the Democrats, so that's what they want to so do. So they're lying to the American people about this. Complete fabrication. I want to ask you about China, lastly, Senator. I know you're on the Armed Services Committee, and we saw a pretty scary headline with this hypersonic missile that we didn't know about as it was orbiting, apparently, now, the Earth in doesn't August. Doesn't bother you? Well, we didn't know about it. Well, it bothered a lot of people, including the administration, based on what we heard from the, from the White House. I'm just wondering, though, what your concern is in, in how we manage this and whether you would move to expeditiously approve Nick Burns as our ambassador to Beijing after his hearing this week. So first off, I'm, I'm going to support people that believe in, in what I believe in. We've got to stand up to China. First off, every American citizen has to say to themselves that, that in, and understand if you buy a product made in communist China, you're helping the Communist Party of China keep control of that country, all right? They put over a million people in prison for their religion. They stole all the basic rights from the Hong Kong citizens. They steal our jobs. They steal our technology. They're threatening Taiwan. So here's what's important to me. Stop buying products from Communist China. Let's all wake up. They're not our, they're not our friend. They've decided to be an adversary. We had a hearing at, Arm, at uh, Senate Armed Services Committee today. I brought the fact, we've got to help Taiwan. Taiwan is a democracy. They're a great ally of ours. We've got to do everything we can. So one thing I ask, is this administration going to help train them so they can, they can be ready if Communist China wants to invade them? Are we going to make sure we have interoperability of our systems? And are we going to give some the, enough missile defense so they can create some sort of iron dome process to stop the Chinese, whether it's the hypersonic or whatever it is. We've got to help Taiwan be able to defend their democracy. Mm -hmm. Would it help to have an envoy then in Beijing? Absolutely. But let's make sure it's an envoy that understands that China is our adversary. They've decided that's not our choice. I mean, we, we Americans, we want to work with people. We want to do trade. I mean, you know, look, we're very good at that stuff. But somebody, a ch communist China, it's communist China. They are not our friend. And so I want to have somebody in that role that's going to stand up to the Communist Party of China. Sounds like you haven't heard that name yet, though, at least in nomination. Not so far. So Nick Burns is not the man for that job. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see. But, but you know, we, we've got to, we, the Biden administration has got to stand up against all these atrocities. They've got to stand against communist China and against Iran and against North Korea. And, that we can't have, and against the Cuba regime and the Castro regime, we've got to stand up for what we believe in. I want you to have basic rights. I want all, everybody around the world to have basic rights. I mean, I want it for my kids, my grandkids. I want it for everybody. Let's well, stand up for it then. Senator Rick Scott, Republican from Florida. Many thanks for talking with us today on Bloomberg. It's great to be with you.